Hello, welcome. I've got an interesting topic today. What can we learn from elephants? I bet you're wondering what on earth that's all about. Um, hi, I'm Diane Simbora from Thrive After Family Violence and for the past 10 years I've been working with survivors of violence to um, take them from just surviving to actually go on and thrive. Okay, um, so uh, about elephants. <laughs> elephants are incredibly powerful creatures. They're used in some countries for work which would normally need heavy machinery so they're, uh, they're utilized quite widely in some countries. Um, they've also been used in traveling circuses all over the world you know and this is where you'll see a fully grown elephant uh, attached by a small chain to a metal stake. Yeah? And a fully grown female elephant, I'm going to use a female elephant for obvious reasons that will become obvious as we go on, but a fully grown female elephant could rip up the stake in a second. She, but she doesn't. She has the power to do so, but she doesn't do it. She just stays there. Why? Yeah. So the elephant is conditioned. She's conditioned to believe that when she's tied to that stake, she cannot move. That conditioning is so deeply embedded, she doesn't even try to move. She just stays. So where did it all start? When the elephant is a baby, they tie her foot to a metal stake using a chain. Okay, She pulls on the chain um, and finds that the stake won't move. So she's yanking on it. She keeps on struggling, but she's too small and she's not yet powerful enough. To, to budge the stake, okay? The only time she's free, free is when her keeper chooses to set her free, okay? She associates the chain around her ankle to a lack of freedom. And she recognizes that her keeper is the controller of her freedom. So after days, weeks, and months of conditioning, being tied to the stake, even though the elephant has grown over time and now she has the physical strength in order to be able to pull up the stake easily, the mind of the elephant has been conditioned to believe that she is not free to move as long as the chain is attached to her ankle. She's also conditioned at this point to believe that she's not free unless her keeper gives her freedom. Therefore, her life is not her own. The belief, that belief is reinforced again and again and again on a daily basis. Okay? So is the elephant happy? Would you be happy if you were confined to a, a really small space and tied to a stake? You know, She's unable to move unless the keeper comes and, and releases her. So it's not a happy situation. The keeper always escorts the elephant wherever she goes. The keeper's in control of what the elephant is permitted to do. It's total control over her. Does this all sound familiar? I think it does. Serial abusers do exactly the same thing. He tells you that you are not free to visit friends and family. He tells the kids that they have to come straight home from school, that they're not free to go and visit their friends or play in the playground for a while. Friends and Your friends and family get the message that it's also not okay to come and visit you at home. It's an uncomfortable place and so they just stop coming if they tried it in the early stages. He checks your phone, your computer, your social media accounts to make sure you're not in contact with anyone. Any violation of the rules that he sets, in some, it, it, require, it, it results in some sort of um, punishment. And that's his deterrent to any thoughts of breaking his rules in the future. Got it? I hope this is making sense. He controls the finances, how much you have available to spend on the weekly groceries, but he doesn't seem to have the same limitations as he imposes upon you and the kids. So, yeah, he's, he's much more liberal with himself and his ability to spend money. He tells you that if you told anyone about what's going on at home, they wouldn't believe you anyway. The way he acts in public and the way people respond to him in public has a tendency to make you believe that what he's saying is true. They seem to 
they seem to respect him and admire him and they, they, he seems to get along well with people. So you, you think, oh, maybe, maybe he's right. Maybe they won't believe me after all. When someone actually does notice something and asks you, are you okay? You say, I'm fine. You're conditioned for, to believe that if you actually say anything, if you told anyone what was really happening, they wouldn't believe you anyway. So why bother to try? Does that sound like the elephant? There is punishment attached to not keeping the family secret, the family secret of what's going on behind closed doors. You keep the secret because you want to avoid the punishment that he's going to mete out and you want to survive. Hmm? That is a natural response to this type of control and conditioning. So back to the elephant. You know? She has the capacity to be able to rip up the steak at any time because she's a fully grown elephant. But what is needed, what is really needed, is the realisation that she is the victim of weeks, months and years of conditioning. So once she understands that, that she's, she's not really a prisoner, but it's all a result of the weeks, months and years of conditioning that is in, embedded in her brain. The limitations are not true limitations. They are a fabrication so that the keeper can keep control of her. Okay? She is incredibly powerful. Listen to this. She is incredibly powerful. And he doesn't want her to recognize her power and use it against him. I'll say it again. She is incredibly powerful and he doesn't want her to recognize her power and use it against him. Okay. Select the person you want to tell about what's going on at home. Okay. Borrow someone else's phone if you can so that it can't be traced back to you, so that the phone call can't be traced back to you. Find one person, just one person that you can trust. Test the waters and make sure that you can trust them. There are more and more people out there who are becoming aware of family violence. And I'm not talking about the black eyes and broken limbs. I'm talking about coercive controllers and psychological abusers. People are more aware of the unseen and um, invisible uh, forces of, of uh, family violence and abuse. Okay, This is a unique time that presents unique challenges. COVID and the lockdowns have created conditions whereby normal opportunities to escape from a violent or an abusive relationship are somewhat limited. Um, take just one step, then rest. I, I mean it, just rest. Take one small step and rest, and then slowly build your confidence ready for the next step, okay? By taking one tiny step at a time, at every opportunity, it will bring you closer to freedom, okay? I'm hoping that the, the women who need to hear this and the women and children who need to hear this can hear this today. Stay safe and remember you are not alone. There are other women who are going through the same thing and other women like me who have been through what you're going through. Stay safe and know that you are not alone. Take care. I hope you do well. And please um, remember, take one tiny step at a time. It will get you to where you need to go. Thank you. See you later.